Wow, we're here talking about back-to-back -back wins. Is this real life? The New York Mets have found a way to win back-to-back -back games. Mets win, baby. 6-1 to one over the St. Louis Cardinals. Am I ready to claim that the Mets are back? No. Am I ready to claim that they're not Fugazi? No. Am I going to do cartwheels and backflips over this win? No, because of the fact that the St. Louis Cardinals have been absolutely horrendous. However, I will say there are definitely positives to take away from this game. That is for sure. The fact that the offense did give you a solid enough performance. You look at Daniel Vogelback in particular, and you could tell that that week off definitely benefited him. You were noticing him actually swing the bat early on to first pitch that he saw back. He swung the bat on and it. Ended up going foul, but regardless, it was comforting to see him actually swing the bat tonight. Ended up paying off in a way, which we'll talk about. And then you look at the pitching side. Tyler McGill put together a fine outing because the Cardinals still do have talent when it comes to the lineup side of things. So it was comforting to see Tyler McGill be able to have a sharp outing. Granted, he had a little bit of luck because of the fact that Jordan Walker just absolutely forgot how to play baseball and didn't realize the Cardinals were down by four runs, electing the steal third in the game. But regardless, the Mets end up getting the win, and I'm going to take it because of the fact that, again, it has just been rare for this team to win in the first place. But there are definitely positives, but also things where we can't be like, yeah, okay, this means that they're a 1,000% back. No, we still have to... They still have to prove more, obviously. A win against the St. Louis Cardinals does that movie, but I did say they have to win the series. But we're going to talk about the game. Leave a like on the video if you do enjoy. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans. Turn on your notifications so you know when we upload or go live next here on Met Central, or as it says above me, since I, you know, spelt Central wrong somehow uh, when I was typing that. Met Central, like it's Montreal. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, let's just talk about this game. As there is a good, not, I was going to say there's a good amount to talk about, but not really. This game was just over the two hour mark, which thank you for not going too long with this game. I always like the shorter game. So anyway, top of the first Donovan and Goldschmidt ground out back to back. Nolan Gorman pops out. That is the end of the top of the first bottom of the first. This was a little infuriating, just, just a tad bit, but the Mets end up getting first inning runs. Can you believe it? Brandon Nimmo with a walk, Marte with a single, McNeil with a single, and the question was, are they going to mess it up? Bases low, but no outs. Surely they'll capitalize, right? Well, Francisco Lindor grounds one right to the pitcher. He throws it home and then turns the first for the double play. So all of a sudden... So the base is low, no outs at second and third with two outs. And I was definitely worried that they were not going to capitalize. But Brett Beatty pulls one down uh, down the right field line, and that makes it a two to nothing ball game. So Brett Beatty with a huge double. Uh, so, yeah, much needed for him. A guy who has not been necessarily scorching hot lately. He definitely needed that double. And he ends up getting it. So Mets go up two to nothing. And Tommy Pham would follow that up with a single uh, up the gap to make it a three to nothing ball game. So all of a sudden the Mets are leading. Daniel Vogelback would pop out to end the inning again, comforting to see him at least swing the bat and not seeing him strike out and just looking at every single pitch. But Mets up three to nothing. Very comforting. Very nice. Not necessarily comforting, I should say, because of the fact that they notoriously are known for blowing leads this year. But top of the second, Nolan Arenado grounds out. Wilson Contreras strikes out. Jordan Walker grounds out. We go to the bottom of the second where the Mets go down in order as Canna and Nimmo fly out. And then Narvaez between that grounds out. Top of the third, Dylan Carlson with a strikeout. Paul DeYoung, Met Keller, of course, would get the first hit for the St. Louis Cardinals. And Tommy Edmond then would fly out. Brendan Donovan would strike out. We go to the bottom of the third. Marte with a leadoff single. McNeil with a single to follow that up. Runners on the corners. And Francisco Lindor would hit a sacrifice fly out to left. McNeil advances to second. The run comes in from third. And that makes it a four to nothing ball game for the Mets. Francisco Lindor, definitely not a good day at the plate. But we will take the sacrifice fly. Brett Beatty with a ground out. Tommy Pham then with a single yet again to make it a five to nothing ball game. Vogelback would ground out, and that is the end of the inning. So the Mets up five to nothing. Hold this lead, please. 
Surely there won't be any trouble. Well, there wasn't in the top of the fourth as McGill gets a one, two, three inning as Goldschmidt pops out. Gorman strikes out. Arenado grounds out. We go to the bottom of the fourth where the Mets would go down order as Canna flies out. Narvaez lines out. And then Nimmo with a fly out. And then top of the fifth, Wilson Contreras crushes one to the upper deck in left field. And that makes it a five to one ball game. And that was a little Chris Paul cuts the lead down the 42 moment. We at least thought, and then it had to get a bit interesting as Jordan Walker hits himself a double to left field. And then Dylan Carlson gets hit by a pitch. And all of a sudden we're nervous. Paul DeYoung though ends up striking out. And then Jordan Walker, like I said, for whatever reason, elects to try and steal third base when you're down by four runs and sort of had a rally going, which was interesting. But Then he strikes out Tommy Edmond, so that ends the inning. So huge way to get out of the jam for Tyler McGill. And yeah, again, just poor base running there. Bottom of the fifth, the Mets go down in order as Marte and McNeil fly out back-to-back, and then Lindor strikes out. Uh, Top of the sixth, Donovan leads things off with a single, and then Goldschmidt flies out. Gorman strikes out. Arenado lines out. It, I thought for sure McGill was going to start to get into trouble after that leadoff single because why do Mets starting pitchers ever perform well in the sixth inning? Why would that ever be a thing? But it actually was a thing tonight as McGill gave a solid effort and that ended up being his outing, which we'll talk about after who came in. Bottom of the six, Beatty and Fam line out back to back and then Daniel Vogelback crushes one to the Coca-Cola corner. Six to one ball game. Vogelback Is he back? I don't know, but he did swing the bat quite a bit tonight, and it was, again, very comforting to watch him actually not just stand there and watch pitches, and if he could start finding a groove here, that would be huge for this Mets team. He makes it 6-1. to Canna gets hit by a pitch. Narvaezo would fly out. That's the end of the inning. Top of the seventh, Dominic Leone comes in the pitch because Buck Showalter loves to put Dominic Leone in a baseball game. Wilson Contreras with a single. Jordan Walker strikes out. Another hit by pitch as Dylan Carlson gets hit there. Yet again, he gets hit by a pitch, uh, which is just interesting that y- you get hit twice in one game. And then Paul DeYoung grounds into a double play. Met killer Paul DeYoung. Not killing the Mets there, thankfully. I'm sure he'll get us at some point this series with a home run. But we go to the bottom of the seventh where Cabrera came in for Michaelis, which Michaelis, I thought they left in the game for way too damn long. But... He ends up grounding out the side there as Nimmo, Marte, McNeil all ground out. We go to the top of the eighth where Josh Walker comes in. He picks up two strikeouts and gets Goldschmidt to fly out. Not too bad. And then Verhagen comes in to pitch for the Cardinals. He gets back-to-back strikeouts. Lindor's strikeout doing the Todd Frazier special down on one niche, swinging at a pitch in the dirt. But regardless, Beatty strikes out and then Fam flies out. We go to the ninth and Ottavino was warming up, but... Buck elects to keep Walker in, which I thought was the right decision. No reason to put Ottavino in that game there uh, unless Walker got into some trouble. And sure enough, it worked out as Gorman strikes out. Arenado flies out, and then Contreras lines out. That is your ball game. Mets win 6-1, 8 hits for the Mets, 5 for the Cardinals, no errors on each side. Again, I'm very happy with what we got from uh, both the offense and the pitching from the Mets tonight. That is for sure, especially more of the pitching side, because, again, the Cardinals do have talent offensively. The lineup, I expect them to hit because of the fact that, well, I, I shouldn't say expect them to hit because of the fact that they haven't really done it all year. But with how bad the Cardinals pitching staff is, you got to be able to get hits off of them. And sure enough, they did. Nimmo went 0 for 3, which is a little concerning there. It gets a walk, but, again, not the greatest day for Brandon Nemo. Storm Marte, though, again, he's heating up back in the two hole where he belongs. Two for four. Very happy with Storm Marte's performance. Jeff McNeil mirrored his with a two for four effort. Both of them also crossed in the plate twice. Happy with both of them. That is for sure. Especially McNeil. We need McNeil, who has been struggling in that three hole, to definitely heat up. And yeah, two for four day. We'll take that. For sure, Lindor 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a sacrifice fly. That OPS is about a sink below 700. Not good. Not good from Lindor. Beatty goes 1 for 4 with two RBIs. 
huge clutch hit when it looked like the Mets were about to waste their opportunity with bases loaded and no out in the first. Brett Beatty capitalized. He struck out once. I'll call it a I'll call it a productive day for Beatty. Came up clutch. And then Fam, two for four with two RBIs. Very happy with that. Vogel back one for three with that home run. Very happy with that. Canna 0 for 2 gets hit by a pitch. And Narvaez 0 for 3. Not uh, not necessarily the greatest, but 4 for 6 with runners in scoring position. Only 3 left on. Not a lot of base runners tonight for the Mets in general. But, again, I, I'm happy enough with the offense. I'd like for Lindor to, to get out of this funk, but... That's uh, that's definitely all I got to say there. But the pitching, that's where I want to rave about because Tyler Miguel, very good outing. His slider looked very good today. Six innings of work, allowing four hits, one and run. No walks in this outing, allowing the one home run and seven strikeouts. Very good day for Tyler Miguel. Spin was up on pretty much every single one of his pitches except his curveball. And then the velocity was up on pretty much all of them except for the changeup. So very good day for Tyler Miguel, in my opinion. I thought that he did uh I thought he did good, got nine whiffs on 42 swings. Yeah, I, I I'm not gonna complain at all with what we got from Tyler Miguel, especially a guy who's been struggling for a guy that might not be in the rotation when Quintana comes back. Yeah, I'll I'll take that from Miguel all day and a Dominic Leone he has been he's been good he's been good lately allowed the one hit but got a strikeout got out of it and didn't didn't uh didn't crumble there when things got tough Ben but didn't break that's what I was looking to say but Dominic Leone good enough and then Josh Walker he was very good with the three strikeouts in his two innings of work Josh Walker, hopefully, could be a nice surprise for this bullpen. It would be nice if the uh, six whiffs on 13 swings is ridiculous, by the way. 46% uh, whiffs. But very happy with what Josh Walker has been. If he could be a little diamond in the rough here for the bullpen, that would be huge, especially to have a second lefty back there in the bullpen. That would be very nice. But again, the Mets get back-to-back wins. I'm just as shocked as you are. But thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially your Mets fans. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this game. And I will see you in the next one. Let's go Mets.